Hello everyone, Mr. Alperunan here again, and today I'm here for my breakdown of Toga. Now, Toga is obviously can be an annoying character in the wrong hands, but she's actually surprisingly fun, and especially with her transform and where she can use other opponent's supports and transform into them, she can actually be really fun when used the right way. And yeah. <laughs> so, let's get into our buttons. The regular attack string is a free hitting attack string. It's pretty decent. You can dash cancel after the third hit, you're not really going to get anything except a plus ultra. So you usually are going to do the first two hits usually to start your combos. Her attack string in the air is another three hitting attack string. Once again, you're never really going to do the third hit. It can be used for wall splats, but she has other really good wall splat tools. So essentially you're never going to do the third hit. Um, her yell attack on the ground is this spiraling attack upwards. She can cancel it into any of her other quirk buttons. Her knives, into her tilt quirk 2, into whatever. Um, and it can be used as a combo starter, because you can combo into it and out of it. So she can get pretty decent damage using it. And it also puts her in an air because she has some interesting tricks and gimmicks when she's in the air and stuff. So yeah, it's a pretty decent combo extender, you can use it to do more damage at the end of your combos or whatever, but yeah. Okay, her air attack, um, her air armor attack or her tilt attack is this double hitting knife attack. Um, it does decent damage but you're just gonna usually use it in the middle of your air combo to extend for damage so you let the first hit hit and then you cancel it into your tilt quirk 2 and then you've done a lot of damage in the air. If you just did it on its own just do that much damage, but you can use it to just get the first hit and then cancel it into other buttons to do decent damage. Okay, her red attack is pretty good. It's decently fast, about average um, speed, and has, I would say, above average distance. You can do it from about here. So yeah, it's pretty good for that. Obviously, if you have a buff with full support or something, you can time it so it's hard for them to get out of it. Unless they do a guard cancel or something. But yeah, you know. It does its job as a red attack, and you're going to be using it quite often, because she doesn't have that many ways to get in, and it just adds some damage to her combos that don't do that much damage usually. Oops. Oops, messed up there, but it's going to do about 8,000 or something damage. There we go, 8,600, and you get a wall splat. So yeah, the red attack's just good at adding damage to your combos. Okay, that's all of her regular buttons. Yep. So her quirk one is this move where she throws the needles at the opponent. It's a projectile, a really good one, because it has really good tracking and everything. And as you can see, after they hit the opponent, Toga is kind of glowing like she is now. If you press the button again, she'll transform into your opponent, and you can see the sidekicks have a little needle over them, meaning that Toga can use them. I'm sure you know this if you've ever played online, because Togas do this a lot. And yeah, it's a really interesting tool, very unique in this game. So even if the opponent's running around, I'll have him moving around. But these team needles have very good tracking, see they like go after the opponent, even when they're running. Like, they're not guaranteed to hit, but see there, even though he was running, they still managed to hit him in a lot of circumstances. And then once I've hit him with them, she's sucked the blood, she can transform into them, and then you can do some combos using your opponent. There we go! That was a pretty easy combo and it was only one dash cancel, but I got a lot of damage for it. So, when you're when she's in the transform state, using the opponent's sidekicks is a quirk 1 will be a sidekick 1 and a quirk 2 will be sidekick 2. So meaning, the only button of the opponent she has is... oh, I ran out already. She can only do regular attacks of the opponent. So I can only do his regular attack string, his red attack, 
and his armor attack, and that's all. But you also do increased damage when in this state. So this is going to do more damage than Deku's regular attacks would normally do. Which is really good, and that's why I was able to get such big damage with her. Just doing simple combos with yellow attacks. Yeah, so she has increased damage, and it's really fun being able to... Because then you have access to four supports when you're in the transform state, because you obviously have access to your own. But you don't even really want to use those, because you get to use your opponents for free, and it costs you nothing. So you can have so many supports and things happening on the screen, it can actually be really crazy. Especially if I pull out all four at once, sometimes I like to just do that and completely go completely crazy and then bring out a red attack, so like... <laughs> like... It just looks ridiculous, and it's a good way of ending out the round, because there's so many things happening, it's almost impossible to like sidestep or dodge them all. And it, and it looks pretty ridiculous too, like if I do it from back here, it's gonna look kind of crazy. Like, all of these people just flying at the opponent and trying to attack them at the same time. It's pretty fun and pretty ridiculous, and it's probably one of the best things about Toka. Yeah. Okay. Um, her quirk 1 can be done in the air as well, and it's that, yeah, what I've been talking about is basically its main use. It also does a decent amount of damage if all the needles hit, but the main use is that you can get the transform and turn into your opponent. Okay, oh, I need to wait for this to wear off so I can show her other buttons. Hello? Okay, there we go. Okay, so... Yeah, that's her quirk 1. It can be done in the air and in the ground. So, now for her quirk 2. It's also a projectile, which is why Toka is so good at zoning. But these ones travel straight, they do not... Uh, travel, um, track the opponent, they don't swerve to hit them if they're running away. They're just fast, decent projectiles that do good damage. Obviously not anymore because they're being restood, but it does about 3,000 damage just for one projectile, which is really good. And also, if you hold down the button, you see she glows, and then she has the charged projectiles, and then she throws a ton, and they do, like, 4,500 damage, which is a lot for a projectile. And it's a really large ray of... Um, like, they have a, li a large spread of projectiles, and they do a lot of damage, and they travel really quickly. So this just adds to her zoning, and she can also cancel her quirk 2 projectiles. Oh, let me remove the suck. Oh, okay, yeah, well, yeah. other than this being a good projectile, you know, it can be the charged version can be used in some combos. Um, to get some good damage that way, so I can do two hits into the projectile into the dash cancel. 7,600 for one dash cancel, which is pretty decent damage for Toga. Um, and zoning wise, it's a good projectile, especially since it can be cancelled into her Quirk 1 projectile. So if I'm running around and, you know, doing my projectiles, often you're gonna do Quirk 2 into Quirk 1, because. Okay, maybe not at that distance, they don't work sometimes with wall, but sometimes they can even combo into each other, and then you've done like 6,000 damage from projectiles, and you've gotten the suck off so that you can uh, t transform into your opponent. Okay, now her tilt quirk 2 is this armored uh, string attack. If you do the input once, she'll just do this, but you can press the button again, and she'll do the follow up. And as you can see, it is a really, really good wall splat tool. Even if I'm over here, it's gonna get a wall splat. It's weird, it doesn't look like it's a move that would wall splat and send the opponent that far flying. She's just like slashing you with knives, but for some reason, the opponent goes flying crazy far and I can wall splat from this far away. So, you wanna be. You obviously. And it's her most damaging combo ender as well, so you're always just gonna be ending your combos in whatever way with this move. And if it meets your blows, well, you've done a bunch of damage. If it doesn't meet your blow, you've probably gotten a wall splat. And even after you've gotten a wall splat, you can end with it again just to get it does a lot of damage. Now, um, yeah, this move, you can also, you can dash cancel it after a lot of points. A lot of people think that you have to dash cancel after the first hit if you want to extend your combos like this. But you can actually dash cancel after the third hit. Get some more damage, and 
Because Toka needs as much damage as she can get, because she's not a combo heavy character, so you got to make sure you're maximizing whatever you do. Anyways, now that we're done with her buttons, I think we can get into her combos. So, this is, Toga doesn't flourish combo-wise, but she has a few options that get the job done for her. So, a regular... So there's a few bread and butter combos you can do with her. So you can either do her two hits into her, her armor attack, and then cancel the armor attack into the tilt part two, like this. you'll get 7,500 damage and probably a wall splat, or you can actually leave out the armor attack and you're actually going to get almost the same amount of damage, which is kind of crazy. 7,600 damage. So you get more damage for leaving the armor attack out, and that's just because this armor attack has a lot of scaling, like damage scaling, so if you use it in your combo, the attacks that you do after it are going to do less damage. That's why if I'm facing a wall or something, I'm gonna just do the combo that, like this one, so that I can make sure I get a wall splat. Wait, not if I'm that close. But if I'm, say, here, and I get a hit, and I know I'm facing a wall, I'm gonna do my combo like this, because then with all the follow-ups, I'm gonna do it from the wall. It's gonna do more damage. And then you've gotten pretty decent damage for a Toga combo. The 11,000 damage is really, really good for her. So yeah, if you know you're going to want to be doing some decently high damaging or long combos afterwards, I suggest using this move, like whether you're going to a plus ultra or something, you're often just going to be doing that move on the ground. And if you're using it in a combo, so yeah. This move, you're almost always going to be doing two hits into her tilt part two, whether you just let it hit and do go into plus ultra, or you dash cancel to do her combos. You can do it on guard as well. And there's no gap there, but you can see it does a lot of guard um, stamina, guard meter pressure. So you see, just these two hits, like that, the tilt part two, it took like most of their guard, which is kind of ridiculous. So obviously you can dash cancel it in weird places to make the opponent not know where the gap is. And then you've got tons of damage super easy, just because you've... I mean, not tons of damage, but you've broken their guard super easy just because they wanted to block. And if they've done a sidestep, so for me, reset, make him do a dodge. And then guard. If you catch your opponent doing a dodge into a guard, you can break their guard instantly and then go in for a combo. And then you get a meterless 8,000 damage, which is pretty impressive, even though it's so somewhat low damage. Okay, obviously her red attack can be added to any of her combos to get some more damage. But yeah, that goes with any character. Um, if you're starting a combo in the air, you're just going to do practically the same thing except start in the air. <laughs> so two hits, into armor move, into quirk 2, dash cancel, and do the same thing again. And you're going to get 7,400 damage, which is decent, you know. It, it's the most... it's decent damage for Toby, especially since she has other really strong zoning and other tools that you can get damage from. Um, another way she can get combos, as I said before, is if you do two hits into the charged projectile, she can get some cool damage that way. 7,600, and you still have not a meteor blow, so you can go for a um, wall splat combo. But I don't really find that worth it. I prefer to use this projectile as a zoning tool, or to just use it as like a big chunk of damage at the end of... Like if I do something like this. I don't, or... Like, yeah, I prefer to use it as a projectile. If I see the opponent with anything, I know that I can get an easy, like, 4,000 plus the sucks. Um, because it's fast, does a lot of damage. So, um, another way that she can get interesting combos, and this is kind of a flashback to, um, One's Justice 1, is she has interesting resets in the air if the opponent doesn't want to recover. So if the opponent doesn't want to recover, you can actually get this as a proper combo, you can get um, attacks after your, after your armor attack, 
as a true combo if your opponent doesn't recover. This is not going to work if your opponent recovers, because they will just miss. And then she can get about high damage with no meter. But if the opponent's recovering, like I have him set to now, it's going to miss and we'll, they can recover, so they have a chance to maybe squeeze in something else. But what I find really good about this is that it actually still has like a really high hit chance. Like if I, a lot of the time I just do two hits into this, they're both in the air. Whether they recover or not, I'm most likely going to be able to get the follow-up attack off unless you just guard because there's not much room for you to press any buttons in between. Maybe you can squeeze an armor attack, and depending on the direction, I can't reach you. But if I do a dash, there's no escaping it. So unless you do, like, a just guard in the air or something, it's really hard to avoid that. And because you've done a recovery, this, the damage scaling of this attack in the air doesn't apply, so the, the combo that you get in the air is going to be full damage. Oopsie. God, why can't I hit it suddenly? <laughs> so because he did a recovery, all the damage was reset. There's no scaling effect. So I can get pretty decent damage afterwards. And if you add that 8,000 on top of whatever I got here, 4,000 here, <laughs> then you're getting a 12,000 damage combo that's almost guaranteed. And so, yes, the numbers say that Toga's damage is low, but if you add all the damage that she's doing together, so even that without the wall splat was, was 5,000 damage, if you add that to this, you've got an offer of 4,000 damage and 5,000 damage, that's like an easy 9,000 that, like, she didn't spend any, any, um, any meter on. She didn't use any dash cancels, and you've taken a decent amount of combo. Obviously there are ways to get out of it if your opponent is ready for it, but a lot of time they aren't ready, and you're going to be able to get decent and high damage with Toga, even if it isn't a true combo. Okay, um, so yeah, your, my opponent's on recovery, and even when he's recovering, I can get these resets in the air. And she has even more shenanigans that she can do in the air with resets. So if I am in the air, and I do two hits, I'll just start with this. I can do two hits into the Quirk 2 string, and kind of... I'm sure you'll remember this from Once Justice 1, you can loop this. But there is a big flaw in this game. Not only like does the damage scaling like bring it down so much, so every time I do it it does less and less damage. Unless they do a recovery or fall to the ground or get Meteor Blown, it does less and less damage. But it can still be a good reset, like if I do this at the end of my combo, I can get some good damage, and like, keep looping the opponent and make them scared, or like, um, bait them to use their supports or something by doing these weird, it seems like an infinite in the air. But, there is a big flaw with these combos in this game, and that is, if I turn on target combo, the opponent can actually just your minus once you've done the quirk, tilt quirk two in the air. So the opponent can attack before you can. So if I go, see, look, I was tr I was pressing it as hard as I can, but the opponent was able to beat me. So you don't even have to do a just guard or anything fancy. If you see Toga trying to go for these air resets, you can just mash out of them. But I do still like to use them because. A lot of the time the opponent isn't ready for them, so I can get some increased damage from whatever combos I'm doing. And then you get some weird, like, seems like an infinite if your opponent isn't willing to try and mash out of it. And it is pretty easy to mash out of it, of course. Or you can sidestep or do anything. So yeah, they're, they're definitely not real resets, but they're something to keep in mind when you're using Toga, because they can trick your opponent, and yeah, they're, they're very gimmicky, they're not real. Um, just like this, these combos, this isn't a real combo because they can recover and then do a just guard or something, but obviously this one is a bit more tricky because even if they recover, you can still hit them with a the follow-up, so, and, and, and unless they do a just guard or a sidestep some, or something really early, you're still going to get easy damage. So that one is a bit scary, the attacks after the armor attack, so you have to be wary of that one. And make sure you're using it if you're Toga, because you've got to get as much damage as you can. Um, Toga can also get pretty decent damage, this is why I have a non-cannon team, usually I like to play with teams that 
have an intro or something like it makes sense together, like the big three or whatever. And instead of having the um, team with Toga, I feel like she really needs supports because she can get actually decent damage. Finally, if she does, oops, whoa, whoa, whoa. if she does this, Sparkle go, time it better. She can get normal damage just like the rest of the cast, 9,500 for using the support. And the same works with Kami. Oops. If I time it better, I don't know what I'm doing. But yeah, essentially, she, I think supports are really important to Koga because they help her do like average damage that she usually doesn't get. So yeah, 9,500 damage off of a real combo, unlike these things, where she can get really good damage, but if the, sometimes the opponent knows how to get out of them, or... Yeah. There can be ways to avoid them, and then you, it can be really hard to get damage with Toga. That's why I like to have these supports. So even though I did 8,000 damage plus 4,000 damage, so I'm getting like 12,000 damage from that combo, which is really amazing. There are ways that they can get out of it. So if I'm facing a really good opponent, I want to make sure I have supports that I can get damage if they know how to get out of my other combos. Okay, now for her plus ultra one, often you're gonna just do two hits into her tilt block two string, and then it does this. It looks very like Hiroshima's, and just like Hiroshima's, you can combo off of it very easily by using support like Bakugo or Jiro or whatever, any of those good supports, good combo supports. And she's gonna get, this is another way she's gonna get really good damage. And that's why I like to do those um, reset combos that even though they're not real, I'm not spending any meter and there's a chance that I'll get good damage. And if I'm not spending meter, then I can get combos like this that do 13, 14, actually that's basically 14,000 damage with my plus soldiers. And with a move like this one, it's really good because it starts up very fast and you can do it in the middle of her strings and the really scary thing about it that I'm sure you've seen from um, other toga mains like Papa Boto or um, Draco Wolf is if you do this thing, which is already really scary you can cancel it into her um, plus ultra one and that's an automatic guard break and if I timed that a bit better I would have been able to get a combo off of it so, always having Mita ready to do her plus ultra 1 is really important with Toga because it's really good for combos, she gets a, a lot of damage from it, especially if you have support, and it can also be used for a guaranteed guard break. Yeah, I messed that up somehow there, but yeah, essentially, it's crazy in itself that it can be used as a guaranteed guard break. Yeah, I keep mistiming Bakugo, but you see the point. It's very good, and even after just like, if you want to remove gaps or something, it's still going to do a lot of block pressure. And yeah, that's basically a plus ultra one in a nutshell. It's something that you're often going to be want to save up for, and that's why I keep doing combos like this. But even though sometimes they're not real, or they require re require a reset or something, it's just best to um, save her meter when you're doing um, combos, go for resets or setups, use her zoning to get damage, transform into the opponent to get damage, because you can get really good damage that way by using the supports and things. And you don't even have to spend meter a lot of the time. Especially if you're a good against a good um, character like Vulcaling Deku, I got 10,000 there, and I didn't. It didn't cost me anything. None of my supports and none of my dash cancel plus altering meter, and I got basically 11,000 damage. So yeah, you want to you want to be saving up so that you can get really good damage off of a plus ultra one. And obviously, if you're saving up meter, there's a high chance that you're going to have plus ultra twos or whatever, which are obviously really good. If you just want to do a quick big chunk of damage, like if your opponent's about to get their support back or something, and you want to just get a chunk of damage to get a comeback or to make sure you seal the round and finish your opponent off, or just be really annoying and do it when they have 2% life, 
you can use this to end your in your combos. Get a big amount of damage that's completely unbreakable because you can't bring out supports. And yeah, and you're often gonna have that if you've been saving your meter like I've asked me to do. And she can get really big damage. Um oopsie, oopsie, oops. If she's been saving up a lot and you have three plus ultras, she can go for really good combos where she does her plus ultra one and then goes into her plus ultra two. And then that does like a lot of damage. Twenty thousand because you've been saving up for me. It's pretty good. Anyways, that is Toga in a nutshell. That's my breakdown on Toga. She can be really annoying, and I admit she is really annoying to fight against online a lot of the time, especially the way a lot of people play her. But I feel like if you're playing her in a not cancerous way, she can actually be super fun. She has really interesting combos, and she has some gimmicky things with her setups. She has like fake things, she has resets and setups. Things that aren't real, and I'm glad that they're not overpowered in this game, like something like this is definitely not overpowered since your opponent can just mash out of it, like they can attack before you can. And these t things here, your opponent can sidestep or do something to avoid getting into like 12,000 damage if they do a recovery, because I've done 4,000 damage here, and then I get more damage. And if that was a wall splat, that could have been about 9,000 damage, including the wall splat. So, and if you include the 4,000 damage from here to the 9,000 damage, you're getting a 13,000 damage pseudo combo. So, yeah, Toga is really fun. I think she's underrated. Or. She's overrated as a zone her as as a zoner, because a lot of people just do the runaway game, throw projectiles, turn into your opponent, as soon as they get the supports, they just like as soon as they turn into the opponent, they just bring out all the supports and then do crazy stuff. And they often just do like so many armor attacks, and that's all they do. So they can be annoying, but I think if you play Toga correctly, she can actually be really fun. Anyways guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!